You know, in my time as a YouTube creator, I've developed a bit of a habit for reviewing long-running series. I never knew why exactly until recently, but I suppose it's because I'm interested in how artistic visions can change over time, how characters evolve and grow, and how they reflect the fashions and the sensibilities of the era they were created in. I've already covered books and video games, and now I thought I'd take a crack at movies with one of my favourite series of all time, Rocky. Now, whether you're a boxing fan or not, whether you're a fan of movies in general, whether or not you've even watched a Rocky film in your life, there's a pretty good chance you've been influenced by them in some way, whether it's listening to the iconic theme tune in the gym, repeating some of the most legendary quotes from its characters, or reenacting that famous run up the art museum steps in Philadelphia. The Rocky series is quite simply a landmark in modern pop culture, a series that turned an unknown actor named Sylvester Stallone into a global megastar, created one of the most iconic characters in the history of cinema, and spawned a franchise that already spans five decades, eight movies, and shows no signs of slowing down even today. And it all started with a low-budget sports drama released way back in the 1970s. In 1975, aspiring young actor-writer Stallone was eking out a living playing bit parts in low-budget movies and working extra jobs to make ends meet. He had less than $100 in his bank account, slept in his car, none of his scripts had been picked up, and he was even forced to sell his dog because he couldn't afford to feed it. One night, depressed and burned out, he happened to catch a boxing match between current champion Muhammad Ali and journeyman fighter named Chuck Wepner. Past his prime and lightly regarded, Wepner stunned everyone by holding his own for 15 rounds, absorbing Ali's best punches and doggedly refusing to go down. He might not have had the skill, but he had the will to win, and in that moment a legend was born legend named Rocky Balboa. Stallone went to work on a new script right away, pouring out all his pent-up frustrations and hopes and hammering it out over the course of three days in one mad, intense burst of creativity. His script, as rough and unpolished as its main character, soon attracted the interest of United Artists who offered him $350,000 for the rights. When the studio executives wanted a big-name actor to for the title role, Stallone held firm and demanded to play Rocky himself, knowing nobody else could understand the character as he did. Production was finally given the green light, but the budget was slashed by 50% to just $1 million, and Stallone was forced to sign an agreement to receive no money for his script writing. He accepted, and Rocky officially went into production. The movie's plot begins in late 1975, with the current world heavyweight champion Apollo Creed eagerly hyping up his next big fight in Philadelphia. He's flashy and confident, and clearly inspired by a certain other champion boxer who was around at the time. But when his scheduled opponent injures himself during training and no other contenders are willing to fight the champ at short notice, Creed hatches the idea of giving one unknown local fighter the chance to face him. It's basically a publicity stunt, but one that Creed knows will appeal to people who love to cheer on an underdog. He eventually settles on Rocky for no other reason than because he likes his nickname, the Italian Stallion. This is what... Italian Stallion. Rocky Balboa? Never heard of him. Look, it's the name. Italian Stallion. Rocky himself is an obscure club fighter with a spotty record from a rough neighborhood in Philadelphia. He lives in a rundown apartment and has to work as an enforcer for a shady loan shark to make ends meet. He's constantly berated by the manager of his local gym, the cantankerous Mickey, played to perfection by the legendary Burgess Meredith. Not so much a has-been as a never-will-be, Rocky's a man of limited means and talent who tries to make the best of his grim circumstances. The object of Rocky's affection is Adrian, a painfully shy pet store worker that he's had a crush on for some time. Eventually he persuades her to go on a date with him, and the two start to connect with each other, despite the interference of Adrian's drunken, abusive brother, Polly. When Rocky's offered the chance to fight Apollo Creed, he initially turns it down, knowing he'd have no chance against such a superior opponent. Eventually, though, he's persuaded to take on the fight and begins training alone. Mickey, once a fighter himself who understands the opportunity Rocky now has, approaches him and offers to help train him, and after a heated exchange where the two men settle their past differences, Rocky accepts his offer. For the first time in his life, Rocky has something worth fighting for and people around who believe in him. He knows he's got no chance of defeating the champ, but if he can just go the distance against him, then he'll have achieved something that no other fighter ever has. When the day of the fight finally comes around, Rocky is nervous but resolute, while Creed is relaxed and confident as he makes his ring entrance, dressed as Uncle Sam. Having never seen Rocky as a threat, he treats the fight more like a sparring session than a real contest, and he's stunned when a rogue punch from Rocky knocks him to the canvas for the first time in his career. 
as a shake and creed recovers, he begins to realise he's underestimated his opponent and fights much more seriously, inflicting heavy injuries on Rocky, who somehow refuses to go down, and even retaliates with powerful body shots of his own that break Creed's ribs. By the time of the final round, both fighters are tired and hurting after taking and giving so much punishment, but Rocky still has the will to keep going and gradually gets the better of his opponent. To everyone's amazement, he's seemingly on the verge of knocking Creed out when the final bell rings, taking it to a judge's decision. Creed ultimately wins by split decision, but Rocky doesn't care. He's achieved what he set out to do, earning respect from the exhausted champ, and tearfully embraces Adrian as the scorecards are read out. Rocky's gone the distance, and proven that the bum from Philly was worthy of his chance after all. It's difficult to pin down all the elements that make this film work so well, but as a star I'd have to say that the pacing is absolutely perfect. This film unfolds in a measured, thoughtful way, giving us plenty of time to get to know Rocky and its various supporting characters before throwing them into the action. Their scenes are given plenty of room to breathe, and their relationships are put into context so that their story arcs carry real weight and meaning. For example, Mickey starts out as an aggressive, antagonistic towards Rocky, and we're led to believe he's been this way for some time, but the question is why? When a frustrated Rocky demands to know why he treats him with such disrespect, Mickey drops a few truth bombs of his own. I want to know how. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. Cause you had the talent to become a good fighter. And instead of that, you became a leg breaker. To some cheap second rate loan shark. Later, when Mickey offers to train him for his fight with Creed, Rocky explodes with anger that Mickey never supported him when he needed it, and he's only interested now that Rocky's found fame and attention. It's a complex, fiery and uncomfortable exchange between two men at very different stages of their lives, but one that still feels fresh and raw 40 years later. Rocky himself is a surprisingly complex and contradictory character, a good-natured man who does bad things in order to survive, who appears to be upbeat and cocky but frequently wrestles with anger, frustration and self-doubt. When he's given a million to one chance to fight Creed, the dream of any forgotten fighter who never got his shot, Rocky's first instinct is to back away in fear. He simply can't believe this is happening to him and he doesn't know how to deal with it. Adrian, meanwhile, is a shy and mousy woman that most men probably wouldn't look twice at, but Rocky sees her inner strength and beauty. In his own words, they fill gaps in each other. Adrian brings out Rocky's humanity and sensitivity, while Rocky encourages Adrian's self-confidence and independence. There's great chemistry between Stallone and Shire in their respective roles, made even more compelling because neither of them are classic Hollywood beauties. These are very much real people living real lives, not some impossible archetype. Rocky might be the muscle, but Adrian is the heart of this movie, and never is this more apparent than during the climax of the big fight, when a bleeding and exhausted Rocky is floored by a brutal combination from Creed. As Mickey begs him to stay down and a victorious Creed begins to celebrate, Adrian watches on with tears in her eyes while the music swells to a crescendo and Rocky struggles bravely to his feet one last time, bloodied but unbeaten. It's quite simply a flawless piece of cinema, and one that's lived with me and countless millions of others throughout my whole life. The supporting characters round things out brilliantly. Burt Young is perfect as Adrian's abusive and jealous brother Polly, a man who seems to act as equal parts friend and enemy to Rocky. It's interesting that the later films in the series portray him as almost a comedy figure, a lovable but loyal rogue, but there, here there's a much darker and grittier edge to him, and it's not hard to guess that he's the reason why Adrian is so shy and browbeaten. The scene where she finally loses her shit and rebels against his constant put-downs is both a powerhouse performance by Talia Shire and a pretty satisfying conclusion to their troubled relationship. It's enough to show Polly that she won't be bullied and pushed around any longer, and make him realise that he only has himself to blame for his failures in life. He might not be all bad, but he's certainly not all good either. Carl Weathers injects a welcome touch of humanity into the arrogant and flamboyant Apollo Creed. He's not so much a villain as a simple adversary for Rocky, and the two characters are basically mirror images of each other. Whereas Rocky is humble and monotone, Creed is charismatic and articulate. While Rocky's fighting style is crude but aggressive, Creed is a technically skilled and proficient boxer, and where Rocky is hungry and determined for success, Creed is complacent and overconfident, dismissing his trainer's concerns that Rocky could actually be a threat. He expects a walkover, but Rocky surprises him by fighting with skill and determination, forcing him to dig deep and treat his challenger with respect. And of course, it's impossible to talk about a Rocky movie without mentioning that iconic Bill Conti soundtrack. It simply never gets old, and just hearing it is enough to evoke vivid memories of the film. 
Let's face it, if you've ever worked out in a gym, you've probably listened to Gonna Fly Now or Going the Distance yourself, so you don't need me to tell you how impactful they are. But it's the quiet, reflective tracks that I think are so unappreciated in this film, like Adrian's tender piano track or the slow, sad tune that plays as Rocky slogs alone through the early morning streets of Philadelphia. I think these tunes perfectly capture the mood of their scenes. There's something wonderfully timeless about the idea of a nobody being plucked from obscurity and being given that one golden chance to prove themselves. It's something that everyone who never caught a break in life can relate to. Rocky is a film which tapped into that universal longing to succeed, and did it with such passion and honesty that it's still remembered more than 40 years later. The film's ending hammers home the point that going the distance and refusing to stay down is often more important than simply winning or losing. Rocky is a film that influenced a whole generation of moviegoers, teaching them that they could achieve great things with hard work and determination, and it continues to do so today. No matter where you are in life, I think you always feel better after watching Rocky, and for that reason I'd heartily recommend this film to anyone.